kids. It has been a little while. I hope you kids are staying safe from the coronavirus. Um, it is Halloween month, it's October. Um, I don't know if there's any trick or treating in your uh, uh, state or your area. Um, to stay safe during this Halloween season, uh, I'm going to start doing my weeds again. Um, obviously, um, this old golden book, Bambi, uh, it was presented to my wife, Jill Meister, that was my wife's maiden name, uh, on 6 1975 she was like, uh, probably like seven years old, uh, so yeah, that was a long time ago, um, See the back covers ripped. Uh, uh, so, but it is an old book. Okay. <clears throat> so like my uh, purplish uh, color glasses, so like a purplish blue. Okay. Walt Disney's Bambi, based on the original story by Felix Sultan. This was actually illustrated by the Walt Disney Studio. This is a 1974 printer. Okay. Bambi came into the world in the middle of a thicket. One of those little hidden forest glades which seemed to be open with a really screen in all sides. So it's like a, a thicket, you know, the woods are, are, are tall on all sides. The magpie was the first to discover him. This is quite an occasion, he said. It isn't often that young prince is born. Congratulations. So he's in that thicket, all the bush. He's in the birds and so the trees and all the animals. <coughs> mother looked up. Thank you said quietly. Then she nudged her sleeping baby gently with her nose. Wake up! She whispered, wake up. The fawn lifted his head and looked around. He looked frightened and edged closer to his mother's body. She licked him reassuringly and nudged him again. He pushed up on his thin hind legs, trying to stand. It is hard for a deer to stand, a, a newborn uh, well. <clears throat> But his forelegs kept crumbling. But at last they bore his weight and he stood beside his mother. What are you going to name the young prince? asked the baby rabbit. I'll call him Bambi, the mother answered. So this Bambi uh, standing for the first time.
Bambi, repeated the rabbit. That's a good name. My name's Thumper. And he hopped away with his mother and sisters. The little fawn sank down and nestled close to his mother. She licked him his spotted red coat softly. The birds and animals slipped away through the forest, leaving the thicket in peace and quiet. The forest was a be beautiful in the summer. The trees stood still under the blue sky, and out of the earth came troops of flowers, unfolding their red, white, and yellow stars. Bambi liked to follow his mother down the forest paths so narrow that the thick leafy bushes stoked his flanks as he passed. Sometimes a branch chipped him on a bush tangled about his legs, but always his mother walked easily and surely. So there's a um, so this, this is the thicket, it has the tall grasses and everything on all the sides, so it's the thicket of brush, right? And, 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 and uh, <clears throat> the animals looking on, and, and then Bambi walking with his mother. <clears throat> There were friends of all along these forest paths. The opossums hanging by the long tails from the branches of a tree said, Hello, Prince Bambi. As Bambi and his mother reached the little clearing in the forest, they sat. They met Thumper and his family. Come on, Bambi, said Thumper. Let's play. And Bambi began to go run off on the stiff, spiny legs. And they saw a family of birds. These are birds, Bambi, Thumper said. They don't show the birds in that picture, but this is the possums hanging down by the tails. And the Bambi twisted his neck and they looked up. And, uh, and then the family of, of rabbits. Bird? Say Bambi? Slowly it was his first word. When he saw a butterfly flutter across the path, he cried, Bird! Bird! No, Bambi, said Thumper. That's not a bird, it's a butterfly. Then Bambi saw a couple of yellow flowers and he, and he bound it towards them. What a fly, he cried. No, Bambi, the thumper, flower. Suddenly, he drew back. Out of the bed of flowers came a small black head with two gleaming eyes. Flower, said Bambi. That's not a flower, Thumper giggled. That's a skunk. Flower, said Bambi again. The young prince can call me Flower if he wants to, said the skunk. I don't mind it. In fact, I like it. Bambi had made another friend. That's when he meets the skunk and they call him Flower. One morning, Bambi and his mother walked down a path where the fawn had never been. A few steps more and they would be in a meadow. Wait here until I call you, she said. The meadow is not always safe. She listened in all directions and called, come. Bambi bounded out. Joy seized him and he leaped into the air three or four times, even five times. Catch me, his mother cried. She bounded forward. Bambi started after her. He felt as if he were flying without any effort. As he stopped for breath, he saw standing beside him a small fawn. Hello, 
he said, moving near to him. We're going to see the little anim uh, in the drawings uh, right here. Um, illustrations. Um, <clears throat> you can see all the rabbits there. And the meadow, of course, is, a, uh, is an opening uh, when they come out of the forest. It's, it's an opening. <clears throat> Bambi, shy, bounded away to where he saw his friend, Flower, the skunk, playing. He pretended he did not see the new little fawn. Don't be afraid, Bambi, his mother said. That is little Pauline. Her mother is Aunt Anna. Soon Bambi and Pauline were racing along the heel locks. So, there, there he is with, with the skunk, Flower. And the open metal with Pauline. Suddenly there was a sound of hoofbeats and figures. And they came bursting out of the woods. They were the stags. One of the stags was larger and stronger than all the others. This was the great prince of the forest. Very brave and wise. The great stag uttered, one dreadful word, man! Suddenly, birds and animals rushed toward the woods as Bambi and his brother disappeared into the trees. They heard behind them in the meadow loud roaring noises terrifying to Bambi's ears. Later, as Bambi and his mother lay safely in the thicket, his mother explained, man, Bambi, it was man in the meadow. He brings danger and death to the forest. With a long stick that was and spread as flames. Someday you will understand. One morning Bambi woke shivering with the cold. His nose told him there was something strange in the world. When he looked out through the thicket, he saw everything covered with white. Okay. So there they are in the meadow and they're running. And it's a uh, the one in from the man, because the men are hunting. And uh, so the so the deer and the animals, you know, are running away from the hunter, from man. <clears throat> it is snow, Bambi, his mother said, go ahead and walk out. Cautiously, Bambi stepped on the surface of the snow, and he saw his feet sink down into it. The air was calm and the sun on the white snow sparkled. Bambi was delighted. As he walked, stepping high and carefully, a breeze shifted a branch above him ever so slightly, just enough to tip heavy load of snow on Bambi's head. He jumped high in the air, startled and frightened, then ran on, licking the snow from his nose. It tasted good, clean and cool. So when Bambi sees the snow of the winter for the first time. <clears throat> and he's walking out and exploring the snow. Duffer was playing on the ice covered pond, and Bambi trotted gingerly down the slope and out onto the smooth ice, too. His front legs shot forward, his rear legs slipped back, and down he crashed. He looked up to see Duffer laughing at him. He finally lurched to his feet and skidded across the ice dizzily, landing headfirst in a snowbank on the shore. As he pulled himself out of the drift, he and Duffer heard a faint sound of snowing. Peering down into a deep barrel, they saw the little skunk laying peacefully asleep on a bed of weathered flowers. Wake up, flower, then they called. Is it spring yet? Flower asked sleepily. No, it's winter, just beginning, said Bambi. I'm hibernating, the little skunk smiled. Flowers always keep sleep in the winter, and he dozed off again. When I first saw Bambi for the first time, I did not know that skunks hibernated. Um, 
it is a jumper giggling with the end of the on the uh, ice. I don't have a picture of that one. It is one of my favorite uh, Disney cartoons. It was always my favorite as a kid, um, Bambi was. So Bambi learned about winter. It was difficult time for all the animals in the forest. Food grew scarce. Sometimes Bambi and his mother had to strip bark from trees and eat it. Alas, when it, when it seemed they could find no more to eat, there was a change in the air. Then sunshine flooded on the bare branches, and the air was a little warmer that day too. Bambi's mother dug onto the, onto the soft snow and found a few blades of pale green grass. And Bambi's mother was nibbling at the grass when suddenly smelled man. As they lifted their heads, there came a deafening roar like thunder. So it just shot to the air like thunder. This loud blast. Quick, Bambi, his mother said. One for your thicket. Don't stop, no matter what happens. Bambi darted away and heard his mother's footsteps behind him. Then came another roar from the man's guns. Bambi dashed among the trees in a terrified speed. But when he came at last to the thicket, his mother was not in sight. He sniffed the air for the, her smell and listened to her hoofbeats. But there was nothing. Bambi wished into the, from the forest, calling wildly for his mother. Silently, the old stag appeared beside him. Your mother can't be with you anymore, the stag said. You must learn to walk alone. And he saw it. Bambi followed the great stag off to the snow-filled forest. So the mother got uh, sadly killed by man, and uh, Bambi is walking away with the old stag. It was spring. Everything was turning green, and the leaves looked fresh and smiling. Suddenly, Bambi looked up and saw another deer. There's all the animals of the forest, all gathered. Hello, Bambi, and the other day, don't you remember me? I'm Farine. Bambi stared at her. Bambi was now a great, graceful and beautiful doe. A strange excitement swept over Bambi. When Farine trotted up and licked his face, Bambi started to dash away. But after a few steps, he stopped. Farine dashed into the bushes and Bambi followed. Suddenly, Bono, a buck with big antlers, stood between Bambi and Farine. Stop! He cried, Farlene is going with me. Bambi stood still as Ronald nudged Farlene down the path. Suddenly he shot forward and they charged together with the crash. So the fighting with the antlers. Uh, the deer fight. Again and again they came together. Forward to forward. The Pong broke from running antlers. The Pong part of the antlers. Um, took a terrific blow up upon his shoulder and he fell to the ground, setting down the rocky embarkment. Embarkment, a little deal. As Ronald limped off into the forest, Bambi and Thaline walked away through the woods. At night, they trotted onto the meadow. They stood in the moonlight, listening to the east wind and the west wind calling to each other. Early morning in the autumn, Bambi sniffed the scent of man. The great stag came and said, Yes, Bambi, it's man. It's tent and campfire. We must go to the hills. Bambi ran back to the thicket for Farlene. The sons of man and the barking dogs came closer. He lunged into the dog's cart. Run, Farlene! The wall of the gun crashed behind him, but he dashed ahead as a killing pain shot through him. The old stag appeared and said, the forest has caught fire from the flames of man's campfires. We must go to the river. They plunged into the ragged region fire and they fell into a cool rushing 
Water. Panting and breathless, they struggled onto the safe shore over the cloud of, with, with other animals. With a cry of joy, Felin came running to him. He gently licked the wound on his shoulder. Together they stood on the shore and watched the flames destroy the forest home. You will see the, the little pig at the bottom of uh, uh, the, the campers. The man in the campfire. Which is why you have to really put out a campfire when they're camping. Make sure you store it, make sure it's really wet. Uh, you know, put dogs in the water and you have to stir it to make sure it's out. Uh, so you don't cause uh, fires. That's what's going on in California. <clears throat> Spring had to come again and green leaves and grasses and flowers covered the, the scars up by the fire. Again, news went through the forest. Come along, come to the thicket. As the thicket, the squirrels and rabbits and birds were peering through the undergrowth that fell in the two spotted fawns. And not far away was Bambi, the proud father and the new great prince of the forest. And that was the last uh, page. The covers ripped off, but that's the last page, that's the whole book. I hope you kids enjoyed uh, this reading of Bambi. I'll see you guys on the next uh, read that I do. I'm going to do some reads more often now since uh, uh, winter is coming. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy uh, my Children's Time channel. Blessings always.